When people speak about the tech industry, there are certain things that they don't tell you. Working in tech is often glamorized. People speak about the positive, often leave out the cons. In this video, I'm gonna take you through some of the things they don't tell you about the tech industry and working in this industry to give you the most realistic idea of some of the cons of working in tech. By the end of this video, you have a realistic view of some of the struggles of working in this industry and what you can expect. So you're not completely surprised as you're working in your role. And I've gathered these things through working in the industry, but also speaking to loads of people who work in the industry. And some of these points may come as a surprise. And the first point is the non-stop learning. Technology is ever changing. There are new updates coming out. There are new bits of technology coming out. And as someone working in tech, you have to keep learning. If you're not someone who loves doing online courses and loves learning new things, then tech might not be the industry for you. Yeah, there are roles that are repetitive and that don't change much. But if you're complacent in this industry, you will fall behind. If you're someone who wants to elevate and wants to move towards earning higher salaries and grow in the industry you're working in, then you have to be someone who is able to keep learning. In the roles that I've worked in, there's certainly been times where I've been put on a project or worked with a technology that I'd never heard of before and never used before. And right there and then, I'd had to learn something from scratch to implement it or to explain it to someone else. The ability to learn new things rapidly and understand stuff is a key skill in this industry. And if that's not something you're willing to do, then tech is not for you. Another thing you might not hear often in this industry is that your salary has to be earned. People talk about massive high salaries, but anywhere they're paying you a lot, you have to be providing a lot of value. And you're providing that value either through what you're doing or the experience that you have. People talk about earning six figures in tech, earning so much money in cybersecurity or cloud or, or software engineering. But to earn that money, you need to have the experience and the knowledge to back it up. They're not paying you just for being in tech, they're paying you for the experience and the knowledge that you have and the skills that you have. And those high salaries are not just given to you because you're in tech, they're given to you because you have a certain level of expertise and understanding of the field you're working in or the technology that you're working with. And so if your goal is to earn those high salaries, we go back to step one and start that learning journey and get that experience. And this does actually lead perfectly into the third point, which is something called imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is very common in the industry we're working in. And you might ask, what is imposter syndrome? In simple terms, imposter syndrome is feeling like a fraud, feeling like you're out of your depths and at some point someone is gonna catch you out and realize that you're not where you're supposed to be and that you should be fired or let go. This is a feeling that I personally have felt in my career at different stages. As I said, there's so many new things and new technology and when you're coming across new stuff that you don't fully understand yet, you can really feel like an imposter and really feel like you're not supposed to be there. Another reason this tends to happen is when you're comparing yourself to the people around you who are so technical. You're gonna be working with people who have deep technical experience and knowledge, and when you compare yourself to them, it is very easy to fall into imposter syndrome and feel like you're not worthy. The true ways to combat imposter syndrome is by having a good support system around you, good managers and good colleagues that can help you get to the level you want to get to. You can combat imposter syndrome with support and honest and kind feedback. And also realizing that this is the place that you're supposed to be. You're here for a reason and it took hard work to get to where you are. This leads into the fourth point and a thing that might not be spoken about enough to people who are aspiring to get into tech and aren't in tech already. And when I say this point four, I'm mostly speaking about working in tech in the West, in the Western world, places like the USA and Canada and the UK. And this fourth point is diversity and inclusion. Now, in recent years, diversity has definitely increased in the tech industry, but there's still a way to go. Now, there's certainly people who have gone into tech and gotten their first roles and have faced a little bit of a shock when they've gone in. I think particularly this is something faced by a lot of women. Tech is a massively male dominated industry. And for women working in tech, they are massively outnumbered. The ratio is crazy. So for some women, it's a lot easier to feel imposter syndrome and to feel outnumbered. And there aren't many other women working with you and doing what you're doing. 
And this is the same for any minority, not just being a woman in tech, any minority, whether it's ethnic or otherwise. Now, one of the best ways that I've personally seen for combating this is finding community. There are loads of tech communities that focus on minority groups. And if you're in a small company, it's likely that those communities won't be within your company. They might be separate communities which gather together people in tech of a certain kind, a certain ethnicity, a certain gender. Personally, I've mentioned quite a few times the events that I go to. I go to events like Black Tech Fest, which gathers together black professionals working in tech or founders in tech and that sort of thing, which is really, really cool to see others in your industry. And having that community really helps you to navigate in your role. And so if you do come across any difficulty with, you know, feeling really outnumbered, you're the only one of your kind in your office or in your workplace, remember that there are other people People who are feeling the exact same thing and there are communities that bring those people together and this leads us into another point and this point is job stability now I don't think I have to tell you guys you probably know already there's been so many layoffs in the past two years in this tech industry even by the biggest of companies layoffs have been happening in the tens of thousands and that's been happening regularly this doesn't leave a good impression on the tech industry or on working in tech job stability has been all over the place if we look back three years ago anyone working in tech would have said this is such a stable industry if you have a job in tech you will always be wanted and always be needed and always have a job and it's very rare for you to be let go but in recent years and months things have certainly changed and what would I say to someone who is getting into tech who is super worried about this is that although things have changed you know there's been a lot more layoffs there are still loads of roles available in tech and tech is still a booming industry. There's even more going on and the future is technology. So if your goal is to get into tech, keep going with that. But what I will say is you need to keep looking for ways to stand out. Whether that's your personal brand, whether that's the skills you're learning in your portfolio, whether that's using your transferable skills to appeal to hiring managers and people in tech, you need to be finding ways to stand out in this industry and create opportunities for yourself. The only way to have true job stability is to provide value to the company you're working for. So you need to present yourself as a valuable person. And when you get into your role, you need to provide value to the company that you're working for. So, and so those are the two major things, providing value when you get the job and are working in industry and also presenting your personal brand of someone of value. Now, if your goal is to enter cloud computing and become a cloud professional, or maybe it's cybersecurity and to get into cyber and become a cybersecurity professional, check out one of these two videos. Go on, click one of them, check them out.